Welcome back, traders and investors. We have Rachel Shasha on the line, and she is a trader and blogger at Sassy Options, a graduate both of U USC and UCLA. Uh, how are you doing today, Rachel? I'm great. How are you? Good, good. Uh, well, we had a nice sell-off in the market last week, kind of based on uh, geopolitical concerns, and we've battled all the way back. Did uh, did the uh, did the decline last week provide you with any good trading setups? Um, yes, um, it did. I, I did get long early this week. Um, I actually had a really good uh, trade in options with Grub um, the day that it went up 20%. Uh, is it uh, GRB? GRUB, Grub. Okay, I got it. Go ahead. Grub Hub. So yep. that was good. Um, and then, yeah, I went along some other things too. Um, mostly just trying to take advantage of uh, small movements. I haven't really um, done much swing trades in the last couple of weeks just because I want to make sure that this is not just a bounce and that the uptrend is going to last. What was your trigger in Grub? It was just a uh, breakout? Actually, Go ahead. No, I've been watching it. I've been watching it um, for a while. I like I like watching IPOs, new IPOs, and just kind of waiting for a good opportunity where I think there's going to get a, you know be a case. Oftentimes, you know, if it retraces and then gets back to its IPO price, it will then hang around the IPO price, but then it will it will be a fast mover after that. So, and then the the float is short too on top of it. So I was just been watching it. I've been watching the volume. Um, intraday, and it will just have, you know, these spikes, you know, where no one's really watching. Um, so, and it wasn't really getting a lot of attention either. So, it was, and even though I had posted it a few times, you know, no one seemed to notice. So, um, I just was watching it and just pounced on it. Uh, did you do it with the outright equity or did you do it with the options? Options. Okay. All right. What strikes? What strikes were you looking at there, Rachel? Um, I was looking at, um, I had the 40, the 40 strikes, um, for September. Now, is it, were these at the money at the time or were you buying these ahead and looking like a little I bit out of the money? Ahead. Okay. I bought them ahead of time. Now, okay, so you get a good trade on this. I'm just trying to uh, figure out. So you get a good trade. How do you know when to get out? Because on something like this, obviously, this thing can really blast it off when all the way to $45. Do you just have like a target in mind and it gets to your target and that's good? Or do you like say when your option doubles, your option triples, I'm going to get out? What's your exit strategy? Um, usually, uh, usually I have a target in mind. And also I'll just kind of watch if, you know, if it slows down or how much it retraces. But um, oftentimes I'll take half off, though. So I was able to take off um, a lot of it and, you know, just leave a runner. So it's like a free trade, basically. Yeah, you're playing with the house's money. If you can take, you know, half right. off at a double, at a double, then you're playing completely with the house's money and you can let it ride a little bit. Exactly. Um, and then also, I, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Rachel. I still think it's going to go higher um, near term, but so I'm still holding some of it. Oh, so you still have some of the options here. So you you yeah. hold well. <laughs> See, I've got that scalper blood in me, and I always end up selling too soon. I usually get in the trades at excellent prices, but I always get out too soon. So I'll have to learn from you there, Rachel, how to hold on a little bit better. Maybe I should learn from you. Sometimes I hold on too long. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, do you, uh, do you, you obviously scale out of your positions then, right? You put a, you take a little money and you put it in the bank and then you hold on a little bit more or do you just try yeah. and, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's nice. the way I got it. I mean, Dennis and I talk about that. I mean, how many times have you had like a, a 2,000 share trade on and you get out of 200, 300, 400, 500, 600 and that last 100 shares that you're not so worried, you the most on. that you're not worried <laughs> about, you know? Yeah. Is is the one that uh, uh, that you hold on to the longest? So um, also, I mean, I just want—I wish I would have talked to you last week and uh, when we were making those lows to see how your uh, your Goldman Sachs put indicator was looking. Well, actually, I have to say that it wasn't looking so great, but it wasn't looking so great. So that was a little worrisome. But the thing is, that was interesting. Is that even though the GS wasn't looking so great, almost every other um, option that I look at with, um, you know, I look at all the indexes and, and the momentum stocks, they were looking really good. So it was, I don't know, I was kind of mixed about it. Um, so that also partly is what made me a little bit more hesitant to get too long. 
Um, and he noticed, though, GS has been held back pretty much all week. Um, it's like the one that's not rallying um, with everything else. So that was held back. The market necessarily wasn't. And so I'm going to go with Price, you know, even if, you know, Goldman isn't really working. Right. Um, right. So, uh, I mean, it wasn't as good of an indicator this time. But, I mean, that's the thing is you can't take it just as Goldman itself. It, it definitely helps, but it's not the only thing I look at. Yeah, now that's great using uh you know a different variety of indicators, but boy, I'm pulling up this Goldman chart here right now, and man, this thing is winding up. Yeah, look at this. This is looking juicy Itchy. here. Yeah, look at that. We talk about well, you basically had uh three, four day, four days of nearly identical ranges off a little bit here, but uh, uh, would you do? So, I mean, I, it's a weekly, you know, expiration Friday. Uh, you know, would you try and pick up maybe the one seventy threes on the cheap or something, or do you like to give yourself a little bit more time to, you know, to work a trade out? You want to just give yourself one day on something? No, I'll do that. I'll do the one day stuff. Um, uh, you know, especially on a Friday. I mean, you can make massive amount of money on Friday using cheap options, but um. I don't know if I'd go with Goldman to the upside just because of, of the call strikes. But if you notice, like I said, it is winding up. And so, I mean, it looks like it's ready to go. But if you look at XLS, let's say you look at the financials, um, look, how, look how well they've done um, compared to GS this week. Yeah, and some US, of the other and GS is often, Yeah, and, and GS is often the leader of the financials. So that's what I'm saying is I, I, I do think the options market held it back this week. Um, some so big I think that's what's ready to explode. Okay, uh, something we talked about, we've talked about with Nick Shaheen and, and Fari Habzai about, you know, the pre-market and the after-hours trading. And, you know, you put some positions on and you see the activity that goes on. I mean, you've seen some of these moves, obviously, in the after hours or the pre-market. Uh, do you ever, let's say your long calls on, let's just use that Twitter example from last week, and you see this thing just trading at outrageous levels. If you're outright the, long the calls or something, will you ever go into the after hours or pre-market and try and lock in some profit on that position? I think I've probably done it twice. I, I rarely, rarely do that, no. I mean, like, actually, to be honest, I have, I mean, this is a good week for me. I had Grub, and I have options in Monster. So no way. So, yesterday I saw, yeah. Whoa. So, it's Why? a huge win for me. Oh, we got um, to ask you, so, why did you have options in Monster? What what made you? What um, was... You know, I I like Monster. I, I trade Monster a lot. Um. And I actually had a really, I had a swing position on it that I've had for a while. Um, I was watching it. I was actually surprised at how much it sold off. You know, I think, one, it was a potential buyout candidate or something like this. And then, two, um, I just, I, I liked it when it, you know, I, I bought it too early. I bought it when it hit, when it was at the 200 day. And I and I also, by the way, I tweeted it and stuff, so I don't, you know, I, I make a lot of these things um, public. And, uh, you know, it's it dropped and it went underwater. And, um and I still held it. I decided I was going to hold it because it didn't breach the lows from, let me see, from uh, March. Didn't breach those, so I held on to it. And, uh, it, you know, after earnings, it rallied back up. And then, I don't know, it just kind of held up and was, you know, going slowly, steadily up. So I was like, you know, this, something's going on. So I just kept <laughs> it. And if you look at the volume, you know, it's, it's pretty decent the last uh, couple of days. So... I just held on, and you know, I, I didn't. I had no idea this was going to happen. You know, I just was holding on for it to break out. But I mean, you got a breakout. <laughs> yeah. What's your What's your What's your plan yeah. now? Are you going to ring the cash register? Are you going to see what happens? Um. Oh no, I'm I'm going to ring. I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, like I might. I'm going to take off and then see what happens. Like I might roll because I have their options, so I might roll the position or I, I don't know. But I'm, I'm definitely taking some off. I mean, right now it's trading at eighty eight twenty six. So, um. Yeah, and I have 75 calls. Oh, my Lord. Strikes. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to be taking some off. How how far out do, did you go on those, Rachel? Um, I went a couple months out when I did it. Okay, so... And, and what kind of premium are you paying for those? Like, is this kind of like a little lottery Oh, man, ticket? I don't... It's, I, paid, I paid 75 cents for them. <laughs> or 75 bucks. Yeah. This is a pretty good windfall for you on this one. Yeah, wow. this is good. I mean, the same thing with Grub. It was, I mean, it was like it's just an insane move and so fast. 
But wow, that's, that's so great about options is you can, I mean, you know, you, you can, yeah, you, there's a lot of times you lose. I mean, look, there's a lot of times that my options die, you know, and, and I will sometimes let them expire worthless for some of them, but then you get huge wins like this. Yeah, and you know what? I play the strategy too. I play options in a lot of different ways, and I call this like the kind of lotto strategy where you're buying calls that are outside the money thinking, well, there's a chance that could happen. And I would say right. four out of five of my lotto plays at least expire worthless or you know, or I lose significantly on them. But that one, right. that one out of five is like this monster, and this is the one that makes up more than makes up for your other four oh, yeah. losers. And this one's making yeah. up for, if you're paying 75 cents, man, you could do this like 15 times now here, um, and, you know, with this, with this move here, and have 15 free trades, basically. So, right. Um, and, the, and the thing, too, is that, um, you know, I, I, have, I have what I call lotto, too. And I, see, I wouldn't have called that a lotto because I really believed in it. I, I thought it was like a good swing. Um, I mean, obviously, I was wrong until today. But, um, but the thing is, is, I, I like my lottos are like the ones that you like described just now with GS going just on a Friday, like you know yeah. where I'm just trying to shorter term take advantage of, and that's a lot of for me. And I will let those expire worthless, you know, because whatever, you know, I'm not putting a huge amount into them, and they could you know reap a lot of benefit. Um, so yeah, Fridays you can make a ton of money on options if you if you get into the right stuff. How um how many positions do you carry at one time? I try not to have more than I would say I don't know like seven to ten, and that that's that's in, I mean including swings. I do, I don't like having, and I rarely have ten. That would be a lot for me. I I don't like having that many because it's just hard to manage. And um, do you I mean do you pay much attention to the tape? I mean the options tape I know is not, but the the actual tape in the stocks. I mean Dennis and I had some years where you know we did, we didn't look at charts much or you know we just we looked at the tape and how stocks were trading you know to get a feel for it. Um, if you're getting ready to you know take a position in the stock, did you pay any attention to the tape or you just pick your spots on the chart and make your trades? take my spots on the chart. So you mean the options take like necessarily. Both. I do look at the options in terms of oh the open interest, but I don't you mean are you do you mean like like a level two or what do you No no you mean? but but well I mean of course the stock but um no I'm I'm you know like to hear what you're saying about the, the tape and the options. Like the trades oh, going so, by yeah, watching I, I the mentioned trades. before that I look at the open interest. But okay. I mean do you mean but like when I enter a stock yeah, I'm not just like waking up that morning and just putting it on. Like I, I am watching, you know, what's going on with the stock that day and, you know, trying to get a decent price. Um, you're a little longer I'm, term, so you're not really concerned. And when you're in that time correct. frame getting outside of minutes to, you know, days, if you're in the days time frame, the tape yeah. I think becomes a lot less important information but than it is for like, like a scalp. Fridays, yeah. If I'm doing those lotto ones, then yeah, the tape's more important, but not for like a couple months out. Well, Rachel, I wish we would have had you on yesterday. <laughs> right, this monster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyways, great trade. I'm glad to hear that you're, you're doing well. You had a good week, and uh, you know August could be a tricky month, so glad things are going well for you. We uh, really enjoy your, your outlook and your strategies and the way you approach the markets, and uh, I think everyone here on the show can uh, learn some lessons from your style. So thanks a lot for coming on, and uh, we certainly like to have you on again soon. Sure, I would like to. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Rachel.